I was reading the book, it was like reading, in many ways, a bad mob movie book, because there seems to be this pattern that's happening in the White House. I mean, this is part of one of the things that you say is that you know who was granting personal favors to dictators that he liked and offered to intervene in criminal investigations to essentially win brownie points with these guys. Now, I, I, I don't understand. I mean, I always thought that was against the law. And did he ever go through with any of these? Well, as, as I explain in the book, I did speak with uh, the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone. I spoke about several of these uh, matters uh, with Attorney General Barr. Uh, you know, one of the things my critics uh, say about me is I tried to do everybody else's job. In, in this case, uh, I'm not a junior FBI agent. I didn't have the ability to investigate. I referred it to the lawyers. I, I encouraged others on my staff in other circumstances to speak to the lawyers as well. Uh, and I'm sure on all these, there's a lot that, frankly, I, I don't know about. If I knew more, I would have put it in the book. Uh, and it's part and parcel, I think, of the way uh, Donald Trump behaves is that he cannot adequately distinguish between his own personal interest, and I, I don't mean just financial, I really mean political interest. He can't distinguish between those and the interests of the country. And, and I did find that disturbing. Uh, I have a legal note. The Justice Department has accused you of grossly mischaracterizing the conversation you say you had with the Attorney General Barr, and it s insists there was no discussion of personal favors or undue influence on investigations, nor did Attorney General Barr state that the President's conversations with foreign leaders were improper. Uh, well, I don't say several of those things in the book. I've, I've laid out uh, what I said and what my recollection uh, of what the Attorney General said. Uh, I've done it to the best of my ability, and, and I'll stand by it. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mr. Ambassador, um, before I go on with my question, you, before you said that you have no fear of testifying, does that mean that you will testify if called under oath? I just want to clarify it, that you will testify under oath, yes? Well, it, it depends on the circumstances. I mean, I want to talk to my lawyers first. Uh, I, I, I don't intend to be part of a, uh, of, a, of a Broadway musical, as you were talking about before. I think these are very serious matters. I wouldn't mind seeing a lot of other people testify under oath right beside me. That'd be interesting. But you know a lot, and you've written about a lot of it in your book. It would behoove the America. It would behoove you to testify under oath, show that yeah. you're a patriotic American, that we believe you, Mr. Bolton. I would like to see that. Yeah. Look, I, I said earlier this year that uh, with the, the the way things were handled on the House side, they didn't permit for a judicial resolution of the conflict between yes, uh, the I, president yes. and, and and. But I said with that that option, that possibility removed, that I would be prepared to testify before the Senate. And you know what the vote was. They voted not to call witnesses. Okay, so I think we'll I've said before. But I want to yeah. ask you about, yeah. No, I think I said before, in, in those circumstances, I would be willing to testif testify. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. That's all we do here is interrupt. So um, let me ask you some more about uh, about this t topic, because we know Trump has a particular soft spot for North Korea's Kim Jong-un, even as his non-existent nuclear deal was falling apart. You say that Trump was hyper-focused on getting an autographed copy of Elton John's Rocket Man to Kim, and you describe Trump as totally swooning over Kim's love letters to him. That is so touching. At one point, he compared their relationship to his own dating life. I mean, it's, if it wasn't so serious, it would be funny. Now, tell me something. Why can't he quit him? What is the problem with him and Kim? Well, I think the president is so inexperienced in foreign affairs that when he received these letters, which, which he himself called love letters uh, from North Korea, that he thought they were sincere. And, you know, that's the last thing you're going to get out of the North, North Korean dictatorship. He, he would show these letters to reporters. I was in the Oval Office when he did it and say, look, these are love letters. I mean, it was, it was very disturbing to me and to plenty of other people, I might say, that the president didn't see through uh, what Kim Jong-un was trying to do to him. He was, he was playing him. 
Ambassador Bolton, your book is the title of a key song from the huge hit Hamilton that's sung by Aaron Burr. Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator of Hamilton, has vocally criticized your use of the title, tweeting about someone, quote, who borrows your song to title to write a cash in book, excuse me, who writes a cash in book when they could have testified before Congress. Um, do you understand that the meaning of that song is, do you understand why it's a song about someone being unprincipled, not principled, and do you understand why it's insulting to those of us that are fans of Hamilton to co-opt art from Lin-Manuel Miranda for your own political purposes? Well, I think you've mischaracterized what was done. This, this title was derived by uh, a lot of discussions about what it might be. You know, the phrase, in the room is a phrase used in Washington a thousand times a day. So it's a fair use, and, uh, and, and I think it, it summarizes what we were trying to do. Do you understand why Sunny. fans of Hamilton and Lin-Manuel Miranda would be angry at its use, though? Uh, look, uh, I, I'm a fan of Hamilton, too, and uh, the, the exact story that uh, that, that a song was was predicated on was the was the critical deal where Hamilton negotiating with Jefferson and Monroe got the Southerners to agree for a federal assumption of all the state debts in exchange for the capital being put on the Potomac. That that is one of the original compromises of American government. One of the most important things that happened. So I don't I don't see why people should be upset about the depiction of of that event where to this day nobody really does exactly know what happened at that dinner in the room where that compromise was made.